now, hour number three, radio program on a Monday afternoon. It's nice to have with us on a great series, XM82, yours truly, Christopher Russo, as we chat. A uh, little college basketball today. We'll get back to that. Plenty of phone calls here today, too. A little potpourri to get us started. Let's first, uh, since we're on the subject of basketball, let's start with Golden State. Uh, the, I'm a little worried about Golden State right now. Curry out, first round of the playoffs. You heard Kerr tell you over the weekend uh, that is, uh, you know, obviously going to be very much in doubt. Doesn't sound like he will play. Golden State is going to be the two seed. And Golden State in that first round is going to play a pretty decent team. I mean, they're going to play a Minnesota or a Utah. Uh, you know, they're going to play a team that is dangerous. You know, maybe a New Orleans. You know, it's too difficult right now to differentiate from those teams. The San Antonio, New Orleans, Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and Utah, and Denver. Those six teams, one of them will not make the playoffs. And Golden State will play the third worst of that group. So, I mean, uh, right now, uh, the second... Uh, the, the yeah, well, they play. Yeah, the third worst. The one team won't make the playoffs. The second worst will play the Rockets, and then the third worst. So take a pick. I have no idea who that might be, but they're not going to have Curry. They will obviously have eventually uh, Clay Thompson back. They will obviously have eventually Durant back, but they're not going to have Curry, and that's a big loss. Now, I don't think they can win a championship without Curry. I- I'm not sure if they can. Uh, I don't think they probably can beat Houston without him either. They need Curry. He's, you know, his outside shooting and all what he offers from that standpoint. They'd be still very good, but I don't know if they would be, you know, um, an unbeatable sequence and if they would beat the Rockets, although we have a lot to prove with Houston, as we have said over and over and over again. But that's a big injury. Uh, I guess it was something unique a couple nights ago. I saw the highlights of it. Uh, then uh, MRI's got a strain. He's had that before. So from that perspective, he's going to be out a while. Three weeks weeks minimum, three weeks from right this minute, is essentially when uh, the playoffs have begun, right? I mean, uh, it's March 25th, 24th when he heard it. March 31st is one week. Uh, April uh, 6th is another week, and April 13th is the first day of the postseason. That's the third week. you got to figure he's not going to play for a while after that. So uh, they might have him when they need him in Series 2 and then, of course, Series 3, but they're not going to have him right out of the gate. And I think right now you have to be a little concerned about where Golden State stands. You know, it's going to be Houston 1, Golden State 2. Portland's going to win the division. They are going to be the 3. And then after that, 4 through 8, take a pick. So we will see what uh, develops as far as that whole sequence is concerned. Concerned as far as the uh, Warriors are concerned. Uh, that is item number one today that need to get on the board. Item number two is the Giants and Odell Beckham. Uh, I don't think it means much. I did not hear the tone necessarily of the John Mary number. The owners are meeting so in Orlando about the catch rule and all the issues they have to deal with. So when the owners meet and talk, and it's very rare that you get them uh, where they had to hold a little press conference. All the local guys from all the newspapers and all the uh, radio stations and everything else, they go down to the owners' meetings because they know there's availability with the owners. So, as a result, Mara talked, giant owner, and he mentioned Beckham, who wants a huge contract. Uh, Beckham, you know, wants Antonio Brown kind of money. He can't keep his... He's a, I don't think he's a bad kid. I think he's a, he's, he's, he's a weird guy. I don't think he's bad. I just think he's he's misguided. Uh, you know, he wants to be a diva. But I don't think he's a bad person, by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think he's that. And, I, you know, I don't know if he just did this to basically you know, reading the riot act or, you know, he really didn't want to give him carte blanche for his behavior in Paris. I don't know what Mara's design is, uh, but he basically said right now, anything is on the table. Nobody's untouchable. And right now, you know, I'm not ready to give him a long-term contract extension. Beckham then fires back and says, among other things, well, then I'm not going to step on the field uh, in any sequence as far as the uh, uh, OTAs and as far as training camp and as far as the regular season is concerned. Now, that's a long Long, long way off. Who cares on September 12th? I mean, that's eons from now. Uh, but, uh, you know, he claims that right now he is not going to do that. Uh, again, push comes to shove, you know, he will. Um, and push comes to shove, the Giants, I think, will make sure he's eventually in camp in some capacity. Um, they have a new coach. You, you know, you got to get him back in the mix. He hasn't played in a long time with that broken ankle there after week five. So we will see what develops here as far as Beckham is concerned with the um, uh, with the Giants. I, I will say one thing before the Giants, and I, don't, and I like Beckham as a player. I love him. I don't like, I, I he would drive me crazy if I had a root for him every day. But the one thing I will say, did anybody see the Giant offense last year and Beckham wasn't there? Anybody watch the games? 
I mean, he is their team. I mean, that's all, all there is to it. Now, I know they're going to try to diversify. You know, here's Nate Soldier. Let's draft the running back. Let's do this. Let's do that. They got the kid from uh, Old Miss who's a good tight end. But th- they were an absolute abomination offensively. They were so bad, it was mind-boggling. And that was without Beckham. So before the Giants start saying about how they're going to trade him, they're going to do this, and they're going to do that, let's remember the Giants don't have an offense without him. Let's keep that in mind before we go absolutely crazy. That's point number two. Point number three, two injuries in baseball that we need to address here uh, over the weekend. One we kind of did with Steve. Let's do the first first, and that's Bumgarner, who broke a bone, in, or broke a finger. Um, yeah, you know, he got hit by a line drive, so he broke a finger. They put a pin in it today. He's going to be out, you know, probably six to eight weeks, so you're not going to see him uh, until the month of May, now, uh, late May. Now, listen, uh, the Giants also missed Samarja, who cares about him. He was 9-14 and 14 with a 5 ERA. I can do better than that in a big ballpark. That's not a big issue. Uh, the issue is Bob Gardner and the Giants do need him. Uh, I don't think the Giants can. They're not making a playoffs with that mass and Bob Gardner. Now, everybody wants to read them. Wow, look at this. They they are out of it already. Season takes a huge hit. Uh, they're going to be 30 games behind. No, they're not. I mean, what? The, uh, if you think the Giants aren't going to make the win the division, which I don't think they will. Uh, if you don't think the Giants are going to win the division, then you have to turn yourself and turn your attention to the wild card. And if you think that the bum Garner injury puts the Giants way behind the eight ball and puts them out of the wild card mix, here's what I'm going to tell you. You mean it's, there's first off, there's two wild card spots available in the National League, only one in the American. There's two available in the National League. Yankees and Red Sox are going to make the playoffs. There's two available in the NL. You mean to tell me that Milwaukee, St. Louis, the Mets. Arizona and Colorado are going to run away and hide and put the Giants in a sequence where they can't go out there and be competitive with those teams, even without Bumgarner for eight weeks, that somehow without Bumgarner in the next eight weeks, well, really seven, because one of the weeks is in the spring training, that in the next seven weeks that the Giants, because he's not there, are going to fall hopelessly out of a wild card chase when the teams they're fighting, fighting against are the Milwaukee Brewers and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Is this what we believe, though? That's absurd. Now, listen, the Giants got some issues, and they got some age, 31 years of age. Uh, you know, they don't love their starting pitching, and, you know, Longoria, McCutcheon, we'll see. They got issues. But uh, you're not going to sit there and tell me that the Giants are going to be so bad first seven weeks they're going to play themselves out of the pennant or the wild pull season. That you're not going to tell me. That's number one, the bum going to thing. Number two is Bird. And, you know, this is a big blow for the Yankees. Um, not so much a blow regular season because the Yankees have, you know, a ton of offense. They didn't have Bird last year. And, you know, for the most part, and look what they did. They hit a million home runs and they won 90-something games and they made the postseason. But if the, uh, And I know this is March, so it's a little silly to bring this up right now. Uh, but the Giant, the Yankees, if they want to beat Houston in a seven-game series, and they want to go out there and they want to, you know, be one of the three or four teams that can win a championship late in October. They need Bird in that lineup. All right? Now, you're going to sit there and tell me, well, Chris, why wouldn't he be in the lineup? Well, I understand that. He's going to be out six to eight weeks, got surgery on his, on his foot again, and I, I get it. I mean, plenty of time. You know, he can do nothing and come back in September and we're okay. But Bird is chronically injured. That's my point. He is chronically injured. And you're getting to the point now, if you are a Yankee fan, that Bird's availability is guesswork. You are getting to the point now, as a Yankee fan, that you almost have to expect him not to play instead of do play. And that's an issue. You're at that point right now where you're almost going to have to say, you know what, assume he doesn't play and keep your fingers crossed that you get a little something out of him because he's always, always hurt. And I feel bad for the kid. You know, he seems like he's got a chronic foot issue, uh, never seems to get better. He plays 34, he hits a ball off his ankle, he's hurt. He hits a ball off his foot, he's hurt. Surgery here, surgery there. I mean, a poor guy can never stay healthy. And they need him. He's a left-hand hitter. And believe it or not, the Yankees need a left-hand hitter. They got a lot of right-hand hitters. Sanchez, uh, you know, um, obviously Stanton and Judge. It's hard to believe that the New York Yankees, this is the Yankee team with Ruth, Garrick, Mantle, uh, the, 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 Mattingly, that the Yankees need left-hand hitting. And it's the strangest thing. Who would think the Yankees in that short porch and right need a left-hand hitter? I mean, uh, it's the, but they need one. And Bird would be that guy. Now you got Neil Walker playing first base. Good luck with that. Who can't, who I got to see him field number one. And number two, cannot hit left hand pitching. Let me see him field. Now, you don't want to throw lefties at the Yankees. You want to throw righties. Because the lefties at the Yankees, you're going to get mauled by the three big hitters in the middle of the lineup. I, I get that. 
But I mean, if you not everybody, you know, Dallas Keiko will pitch against the Yankees. I mean, he's a lefty, so they are. Uh, Chris Sale's a lefty. David Price is a lefty. Uh, they are going to have Neil Walker bat right-handed, and he will not hit against the left-hand pitching. So that's number three. And the last thing I want to mention, I'm going to get off topic just for one sec, if I may, and then we'll go right to the calls. I don't want to go crazy on this because I, I do not want to get into this, but I, I, I got to get into it. And I like the Bill Russell and Steve Kerr and everybody involved in these marches on Saturday. 800,000 people around America. God bless. And, and I played tennis on Saturday morning. And one of the guys I play tennis with has two daughters. And I, you know, he rushed out of there at 10 o'clock. And I said, Jeff, where are you going? He was going to walk with his daughters in a gun march, which I was, wow, that's good for you. Excellent. You can, uh, uh, here's what I said though over the weekend when I watched a lot of this. Here's what I said, okay? And it, it, it's just bottom line. You can march until your legs fall off, all right? And I love the fact that Youth of America has done that and they've made a lot of movement here and we'll see. You want to make some statements, all right? I got two things for the youth to do. And the quotes I read from a few of the kids seem to know they understood this. Here's what you want to do. A, you want to register to vote. Take the time and bust your ass and, you know, go to your voting registrar and get yourself registered to vote. Because last year, the ages 18 to 29, one in five voted. All right? One in five. That is pathetic. That is absolutely pathetic. So you can march all you want. The gun nuts vote. They vote. They keep their people in office. You want to really make a dent? And Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich and, you know, uh, Bob Kraft wants to fly people up from Parkland and all that nonsense. You want to make it? You want I'll tell you what you should do instead of worrying about marching. Get your ass to a, a registrar. Whatever you have to do, I don't know how you do it. I, uh, you know, I'm registered. I don't even know how to do it anymore. But get yourself registered to vote and go to the ballot boxes and get these politicians. We're starting Marco Rubio since we're in the state of Florida. That loser. We go to our politics and we get them out of office. So, in other words, when the legislature in these states, when they have these gun bills that run in front of them, you have more Democrats voting instead of Republicans. That's how you change the law. That's how you make some progress. So you kids out there who are 18, 19 years of age, you know, uh, who are right now on a big mission, and God bless you. I give you all the credit in the world, but it doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything. It means, you're not, it means you're united. Big deal. You want to unite? Ballot box. That's how you unite. Now, let's get to Stormy Daniels. Does anybody care? My God almighty. Does anybody care? What are you surprised? Donald Trump? The Donald? 17 half the hour. Calls. We continue here on Mad Dog. 